Now, when I say white people, I don't mean, I, don't, I hate using that word, Caucasian people, the Caucasian culture trying to steal African Mediterranean culture, not the Southern African culture. They, they are basically trying to steal the Mediterranean's culture. Okay, so this is important because when you have a white sheep be the first, like, you know, usually they start with rats and shit. They are experimental rats. What made them want to try to make the first cloning project a white sheep? This was actually a, an occult symbol that a lot of uh, the main two secret societies that love using these, or, or, I mean, the, the white sheep as a symbol is the Rosicrucians and what we know today as the skull and bone. Okay. These two societies are actually, they actually go back to the Mediterranean, the, the, uh, the post-Egyptian world, which is about uh, 500 BC when all of Egypt and most of Africa is starting to be in conflict with each other, leaving their room to be invaders. Now, this is important because, like I said, the first invasion of Egypt started I mean, not the first, but the main invasion of Egypt started in 17, I mean, 1117 BC. And this was by a group of people named as, known as Asians. Now, what's important about that is those Asians that we, the Asians that uh, they record on their walls and shit with lighter scans, these are actually experiments that they were doing that Egyptian priests were doing in secrecy. The same way that the CIA does um, the same way that the CIA runs our country, really, and it's not really a country because the CIA runs the people in the country. That's the same way that the Egyptian priests ran the the culture. You feel me? We never had countries. We only had culture. And with that being said, if you are part of a certain culture, then you become a part of a nation. Yet again, nations have nothing to do with landmass at all. So with that being said. What happened was there was a great catastrophe. There was a lot of even Phil Valentine and uh, Dr. Sheikh Anti Diop and Elijah Muhammad. A lot of our American professors who are in depth into secret society, occult knowledge. They always talk about that period of time where uh, pretty much the white man came into existence. And each one of these uh, prophets, they tell us about how. Uh, our ancestors, they started collecting our information and writing it down and trying to share it because they, were, they knew there would be a time of idiocracy. They knew there would be a, a low point for the for the culture that they had built of intelligence and peacefulness. So they started writing this down on the hieroglyphics and stuff. The main thing that they point out, though, is that the book the main thing they point out in today's world is the religious aspect and the spirituality, spirituality aspect of our ancestors' knowledge. This is important. And this goes back to cloning all the way. And that goes back to what I brought up about the sheep. Because what these people are actually doing is nothing but stealing our ancestors' technology and making you think that it's something completely new. And what they use and nowadays, and this is break, this is something that is really important right here. The word clone is not, there's no such thing as a clone in reality. A clone is a clone is nothing but a government word that they use to symbolize human reproduction control. Okay? Human reproduction control is the actual science of what they call cloning to be. You see, there's no difference between cloning and turning somebody from a quote unquote male to a transitional person. And now he's a female. That is nothing but reproduction control. You see, uh, there's no such thing as a difference between GMOs and clones. OK, so with that being said. You have to really open your eyes to see what cloning is, because that's what that book goes. This book right here, the, the human cloning debate. It made me really realize that the way I was seeing the word cloning was more of a science fiction type thing. Still, it was leading me down the wrong path. And I never realized how deep this shit actually is. But a clone is nothing but reproduction control. 
you're taking away somebody's natural reaction to an environment and replacing it with DNA that reacts to a limited source of information. You're basically shutting down somebody's DNA and replacing it with a computer chip. That's the best metaphor I can give for this. Now, this is important because if your ass get chipped, then you should know you've already been cloned. And this is very important because for all the younger people out there, y'all might not know about this film. But I seen this because uh, I heard I was suggested by it by uh, Bobby Hemmett on one of his videos or whatever. But pretty much it's a movie called Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is a very weird movie because it goes into detail about how the white man sees cloning today. OK, it, the white man sees cloning as its form. It's a good thing. They see farming. See what they see cloning as is the replacement for evolution. You see, evolution was the um, reaction to many thousands of years of Christianity and rule of ignorance in Europe. They made, they made evolution up in order to get them a new way, a new God, basically. And their new God was science. That's what the whole Industrial Revolution was about. And when they figured out that they went around the world and they figured out that, oh, shit, everybody else got darker skin colors. They got, they got um, higher living rates. They had better civilizations and shit. It only makes sense for you to try to fit in with that. So what do you do if you want to try to fit in with the rest of the world? You have to make up everything from scratch. But what you do is you study everybody else. You study them from an outsider's perspective. And you get to know all their weaknesses. You get to know all their strength. You get to see all of their truths every day. If you just study them. And then over time, you realize how different you actually are from them. Once that happens, you realize even more that every other civilization has a story that goes back to your creation. Let's think about this. We want to if you want to go back to any form of uh, religion or spirituality, it all goes back to African, African spirituality complexes. And what these African spirituality complexes always leave information about is how they're just great destruction, great destruction. Then everything came back to the normal. Then we all found peace again slowly. And then we are in the world we are in now, in a way. And that's important because at that time of destruction, each spiritual, each spirituality speaks of having different people on the planet, different types of people. But none of these people are fucking white. Why is that? The only people to record white people in history is white people. And that didn't start until what they call after um, AD or whatever that shit means. Yeah. So. So basically, cloning is like trying to speed. They're basically trying to speed up evolution. They're trying to speed up evolution. That's what is human reproduction control. Now, if you know that every uh, everywhere else around the world. It's basically saying that they were they were there in history, but you weren't. And now you're realizing that there's this technology of genetically modifying organisms and cloning things. And you're going to put it together. Oh, shit. Those other races came together and made me. Now, this is this is the main thing that's hitting us about cloning that our ancestors were doing that shit back in the day. There's many hieroglyphs that actually show this.
as a matter of fact, if you go try to pick up some of Gerald Massey's work, he actually goes into detail about how the Caucasian was um, when the Africans first came over to Europe, they were looking at them as if they were monkeys and animals and shit. And they actually trained them to be more human like. Now, if you if you have a dog, right? This is the best way I can get this example. If you have a dog and you love your dog, it's cool. What in the fuck is gonna make you wanna train that dog to be a human? That's the main thing. What makes you want to train a dog to be a human? In order to get along with it. In order to have it in your environment and train it like a pet. You feel me? You want to, you want this in your you want this dog in your environment, but you don't want it to be dog like. You want it to be human. You want it to be human like. Okay? So what do you do? You talk to the dog. You talk to it like it's a baby, you train a dog, you feed it, you give it everything it wants. But then there's something that's always dog-like about the dog. But the key point to this is you can always take that dog's DNA and mix it and make him fuck. Another dog that's already more human-like. Now, that's one way of doing it, that we've been taught as human beings in today's world. But what Sojourn Media right now is want you to do is to open up your mind to what cloning actually is. And with that being said, you have to see that the way that we see sex is a very organized way of reproduction. You can reproduce in many other ways besides sex, Okay. This is the most humane way of doing it. Basically the cleanest way they can do it without tossing up or But you have to see that if you really go deeper into metaphysical metaphysical studies, you start to see that shit. Even the act of us having sex as humans, we agreed upon that back in time, and and we literally scientifically made our bodies to match each other. Males and females, we can have a baby together. But there was even a time where, shit, we couldn't, we ourselves, only females could reproduce within themselves. We were just like another type of fucking species or something. I don't want I don't want to go into detail like I know exactly what's going on with that. But I do know exactly for a fact that there's a point in time where males and females could not make babies together. And this is the actual evolution that we have. This is what Soja Media teaches. One of our laws is that something that you create, you have to take responsibility for. So what we did back in time was when we made, when the Egyptians and, okay, let me say stop saying Egyptians. When the higher priests back in the day, they um, got technology of math, mathematics, astronomy. But the main thing that they didn't tell us about was the technology that they discovered about the earth. They started to manipulate metals and uh, they started to manipulate herbs at a newer newer uh, intelligence level, which had to do with vibration and electricity. You see, if you claim, what they tell you is that, okay, these monkeys, they start hitting rocks together, they start drawing shit on rocks, they, they, that shows signs of intelligence. But what you don't understand is, if you hit rocks together long enough, nigga, you can make sparks. You feel me? If you, if you put two types of rocks together, that shit is not, some rocks, rocks don't fuck with each other. And this is the experiment right here, actually. So when you when you when you realize that uh, our ancestors thought in a cyclical energetic uh, timeline, what is a cyclical energetic timeline? Just so you can understand, that just means that when when two things come together, 
a third thing happens. But you got to be able to sense that third thing. And in nature, there's two things come together at all times to make something new. But those two things are not conscious of the new thing they're making. They only do them, and when they're together, it naturally makes a third thing. So that's important because you don't see that life itself is nothing but vibration and energy. You don't see that right now you're vibrating, your phone is vibrating, all the shit around you is vibrating in some way. But our ancestors did. And that's once you start to see that, then you can realize that I do not have to stab you to make you bleed. I can get you to kill your I can get you to stab yourself. I can create technology to where fucking I can magnetize a knife to the specific frequency of your body. And we already know they got that because you ever heard of a um a missile? They send missiles from one place to a whole other part of the world. How do they target that shit so perfectly? How do they target that shit so perfectly? Does the missile have the GPS on it or something? No, it's all about magnetism. It's all about knowing the latitude and longitude of the planet. Once you do that, you can know the magnetic frequency of that area of the planet. With that being said, going back to cloning and shit. With energetic cyclical system that you think with... These clones, I mean, not my bad, our ancestors knew that there would be a point in time where they wouldn't have anything. Everything would go to shit. And they had just came from that 10,000 years before. Okay, that's why it took so long to rebuild all that shit over again in Africa. But what was happening is they knew the, they knew the cyclical energy of the fucking planet. And they knew that within a thousand years, everything would go down to shit and there would be a dark age. Throughout the whole world. So what many people took different responses to that. Just like when you hear that the government is controlling your life and uh, there's a lot of bullshit going on. Your water is uh, being fucking tapped. Your phone is being tapped. Your food is being fucking spiked. All that shit. People respond to that in different ways. Some people go react. Some people go tell other people. Some people go sit back and see if that's true. Some people make completely new technology up to it counteract that they'll make drops up you can put it in your water or some shit like that but the same way back in the day that same way they did that back in the day to where everybody reacted to different ways about knowing that the culture that they had built and the lifestyle they had as human beings back then were going to be effect i mean was going to be uh tested heavily so some people, they went to the walls, they started drawing pictures and shit. Some people, they traveled the world to tell the story of the Africans, uh, the culture and shit. To, to. And some people, they made clones, okay? Some people, they made pyramids. Some people... So you're saying they're doing... How we're reacting to shit, they're doing, they're doing the same thing back in the day. Yes. Some were panicking, some were trying to fake, some were trying to help, some were trying to... Some didn't believe that shit. Yeah. Some didn't give a fuck. Some tried to start goddamn... What can I say? Being... How can I say it? Uh, manipulated, I guess you can say. Exactly. Manipulated for their control. So they some can, got greedy. So they can affect them positively and only them. And with that being said, you still have power. You still have... You still had different forms of control in a, in a culture, in a society. You have different people controlling the channel of energy through the sources, which is the, the sources of the people. OK. With that being said, for example, you had somebody like Mhotep. This nigga was a genius, but not everybody was that smart in civilization, though. So with that being said, you had people who was controlling crops and stuff. Some of them got greedy. And then with the people who got the crops and they got all the fucking... Back then, that was money. You feel me? Nature, what you could barter with was fucking money. Whoever had the most resources was the most in control by nature. With that being, with that being said, if somebody created cloning, 
And then you had a powerful man. He like, yo, I'll trade you all this shit right here for your technology of cloning. The powerful man who's greedy, he could then trade all his resources and in return, he would get the cloning technology. And he could do whatever he want with that. And that's where the origin of that Yakub story comes from. Because in reality, there's no one Yakub. There was a lot of people doing this shit back in the day. Okay? You can't just have a whole fucking subcontinent called Europe full of these Caucasians and there was just like one crazy... One person, he created all these people. You feel me? That can't be possible. It's a team effort. It's a team effort. And also, there are so more of people also. It's like, it's like they say, when you have an idea, 500 people in the world had the same idea. So not only he went after that shit, people from other parts of Africa, other parts of the country also, other parts of different nations, they probably did the same thing. Exactly. They knew the, they knew the same information. So what we're getting down to right here is that the truth is that many people on the planet right now are clones. You feel me? Like it's it's very if you want to use the word clone, it's very it's a very childlike word because that's just like calling somebody fat or something else. It's literally everybody. Everybody could be considered fat to somebody else. Just just like everybody could be consider a clone of somebody else. But if you want to get down to physical facts about what a clone actually is, then it comes down to the, the, the control, the natural control that your DNA, which is a chain of proteins inside of your body that literally it controls how much you replicate, what gets replicated, and all that shit. When the DNA is compromised, that is when you are a clone. Whenever you have a pathology that literally contradicts your DNA, which is literally who you are and what you're supposed to do, that's when you are a clone. And we can say that that's all of us because we were born into cultures that are completely clone-like to our nature. You are What a clone comes down to, like I said, is the DNA. And what that goes, that's a, you can see that in a scientific slash spiritual level. But... On a physical level where you can see a person is a clone when they have no internal intelligence or consciousness about what they're doing, but they continuously do it. That's it. That's simple. You can you can detect that easily as a human being. But what the crazy part is, you will see that everybody is on almost, almost everybody's a clone. People a lot of people just do things unconsciously. For no reason, just based on what they call tradition. Okay. That's crazy. You can't do that because that's when you were a clone right there. Now, going back to the actual um, propagandized version of this situation. I want to go into that because what I just told you about cloning was the truth about it. But what they've been propagandizing about it has been a lot of like secret society. These people who... These, the secret societies that are heavily in control of the cloning technology are actually newer ones. They are actually people who, like I said, are reacting to this government control, the Pope control, religion. These are the people who are reacting to that. And the people who have control of it are not necessarily somebody you can look up on um, Google or yet. You feel me? They are very scared, more advanced secretly because they haven't been around that long. With that being said, these people are in turn being used and castrated by the CIA and the military industrial complex because every time a new technology comes out, you have to see that technology could be used for anything by anybody. So if the army want to use that shit, Cloning, they can. This is where you get into something called biological warfare. Um, biological warfare, it, it started back in 1920s. And the Germans are the first people to just rediscover this because there's a, there's a connection that goes back between the Germans and the technology that our African ancestors used back in the Aryan race. Because if you do the history, you'll see that what they call Germany 
is actually the land that they used to reside in called Prus Prussia, which is P is Russia with a P in front of it, basically. That's all. Now, that land used to be the most dominant land in all of the subcontinent called Europe. Now, with that being said, it was broken apart, torn apart, because why? They were using our dark, they were using our dark energy in that continent, and everybody else was getting jealous. Okay, all the other countries and land masses, they were like, damn, these niggas got all the reasons. They were, they were not on the coastline like all these other uh, significant civilizations. They didn't, they were in the Mediterranean making shit run. They were in the heart of Europe, yet they weren't surrounded by mostly almost any water, yet they were still in control. And how were they making this happen? It's because they had our technology. And they knew how to delegate things and organize things on a superior, intelligent level. With that being said, that is why the Germans are able to, the Aryan, what they call the Aryan race, and what they believe in, and they uh, sub secret society called, um, what's that shit called? Are they trying to start up the Aryan race shit, the Nazis. The Nazis. Yeah. Shit. The sub uh, sub secret society called the Nazis, which is just another form of the Rosicrucians, they are actually um one of the free European secret societies that have knowledge and that's why the Pope and all these other motherfuckers hate them. You feel me? The Jews and all these people they hate them and there's a there's been a constant war between atheists, communisms and uh the Nazis because these are the factions of secret societies that control the masses of people in Europe that actually have our technology. They praise black people. They praise black messiahs. They, they still, but they don't do it under the control of Rome anymore. And that's the only, that's where most of the wars in Europe go back to. Okay. But it's just, they fighting over different factions of our technology and our, our secret knowledge. So anyway, what I'm trying to get to to see is that the Aryan race discovered cloning in the 1920s, or they rediscovered cloning in the 1920s. And they put that to work. And that's why they started winning wars, because most of the people in a society wore, they were clones. That whole blue eye, all the hair shit, blue, that is what the clone, that's the standard for the clones they made. Okay, this is simple. You feel me? Now the cold word clone that we are using in this country today is a CIA operative word. Okay. Once you once you realize that clone just this is just a word. And it's a, like, once you have a CIT operative word, that means that they're operating, that means they are advancing one of their uh, missions. If you ever, if you play Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, or anything, you got a mission. You go do the mission, you got to kill somebody, you got to do a couple of things, you get paid money. You don't know what the fuck you're doing the mission for, really. You got an idea, but it's like, okay, I'm just doing this to get money, really. And that's just what these CIA agents are doing most of the time. It is doing it to get money. They don't really give a fuck about the outcome of what they're doing it against. So a lot of people online, you could you could see people who used to be in the CIA and a lot of people who study their um, terminology and shit. They Put it together that the CIA will actually let them know what the fuck is going on. But I know for a fact that the people who are the foot workers, they only get brainwashing words to cover up what they're actually doing, which is just simple actions. Okay? So what they're actually doing is pushing information non-stop that is going to make you be that is going to clone you simply 
there is no fucking there they do have labs where they can take a strain of your DNA, take a piece of your hair, take some of your spit or some shit. And they can trace it back to who fucking killed somebody or who did this to somebody. They do that in forensics. Now, if you take that a step ahead, they can actually clone you with those things. If they can, if they can pick you out of a hundred thousand or two hundred some million people in the United States with your spit or pizza hair, then you know they can clone you with that very same uh, DNA. We seen this thing on Black Mirror, which is a show we watch. And they had this they had this uh, video simulation on this computer drive. This man, he was uh, obsessed with this show. I can't remember the name of the show. But inside of the show, he was like the captain of this spaceship on some Star Trek type right. shit. So you can tell they were keying in on Star Trek for that. But basically, this man, he was a genius. He created... What we, like, in a way, you could say he created, what's, uh, War of Warcraft. Let's say he, he was the creator of War of Warcraft. Yeah. And you, but instead of that, instead of War of Warcraft, you can make your own game yourself. And he made that easy for everybody. So I need somebody's DNA. But the point is, he had it in his room where he could take somebody's DNA and put them inside of the fucking game. Literally. Now, you will be walking around in real life every day as your conscious self, but there will be a piece of you stuck inside of this game, and he can represent it, and it will look exactly like you, but he can code inside of the computer whatever he wanted, and it will become reality inside of the computer, of course. Now, this is important because that is cloning right there. You can literally, they can literally clone you online and have you walking around in the same environment that you live in right now and see what you're going to do in the future. Fast forward that shit. Because it's your DNA and they know you. Because it's you. Okay? Now this is important because you that's what I'm trying to get you to do right now. Expand your... I'm trying to get you to expand... Your idea and what your vision and perspective of cloning and the word cloning. Because you can, I can literally clone you by taking your information that I find from you online and recording it for over a year and putting it in a computer and coding it, uploading it on my computer and putting it on a video game. How do you fucking think? Think about NBA 2K. Think about NBA 2K. If you ever play 2K, a video game, if you ever play uh, any sports game, I mean, all these characters are literally tightened in and coded in by a human being. So. Every time you react to something online, if I record that, which they are doing, every time you send an email, if I record that, and that goes into my whole overall idea of what you are, I have, I, Google can remember shit that you don't remember, especially if you drink, smoke, or take any type of prescription, prescription drugs. They remember more shit about you than you do yourself. Emails that go all the way back to that when you first got your account, the first MySpace and shit. This is what the collective and research engines, which is just another cold word <laughs> for a weapon. That's a weapon right there. Research engine. It's an engine for another weapon. Anyway, anyway, once you, if I collect all this information about you, how you react to different things, how you feel on certain days, if you be online on Wednesdays more than you be online on Tuesdays and all these things. I can literally every day put that into this fucking simulation of you in my computer. And just have that shit walking around and have a more accurate you than yourself. 
so much to the fact to where I can see what you're going to do and have yourself. And if I wanted to go the extra step ahead, I can 3D print you out. 3D printer? Oh yeah, you ain't know they can put chemicals and plasma in that and 3D print a, a, a real human body out. They've been doing this since they've been making cars and shit, really. That was just the first step of it. They may have 3D printing. But now they can do it to where they can use light, different plasmas, different minerals that our human body is made up of. Then they can get an electric brain and store a chip inside of that brain that is has the personality perfectly matched to you. Then I can sync that up to an online satellite in which I can update it every day and not even have to worry about anything. Every night that shit updates and I get more information. Every time you go online, it's updating. Every time you go to the bathroom and you you got your phone with you, it's updating. Every time you go to the mall and buy something with your credit card or anything like that, it's updating. So that's what cloning actually is, you feel I me? Mean? That's what the code word for cloning actually is. It's not, I mean, yeah. To an extent, um, if you watch the Invasion of the Body Snatcher specifically, you'll see how they're doing this. Um, every time that, okay, every time you get bored, you get your phone and shit. Now, in this movie, there was this plant that came from outer space. It's weird as fuck. It's like some saliva type shit that came out from outer space. It landed on the plant, and then it started replicating the plant. Then it came into this like rose-like thing. And then after that, Poopy took it home. Then it started growing. And out of nowhere, at night when you went to sleep, this thing grew. I mean, it, it came out with wire-type looking things. You know how the stem of a... The root of a, yeah, the root of a plant or a tree, it wires out like wire cords and shit, if you ever realize that shit. But this plant right here, it literally was like sparking and shit a little bit and glowing. And when it touched you, it started draining the energy from your body and it started spitting out, literally spitting out your body based on the DNA that they collected just by touching you. But the key part about this is that while the while you were walking around in everyday life, your cone body could be walking around too. And you would never know it. But the key is when you go to sleep, you're growing that clone every day. So this is what I want to this is where we get deep deep and deep. Right here, because I can make a whole nother video about how literally when people go to sleep and they experience out of body experience and all that other shit, I can literally make a a real good case that that's just you living in your clone, you living in the consciousness of your clone body that they have for you. Okay, but that's not the video for this right here. But what I want you to see is that they literally have an online you that's the symbology for this shit okay now that's key because the online what online just means is you're powered on and what is powered on okay what are you online what are you powering on you feel me so the whole thing that you're powering on is the actual entity of the united states and all these other um what we call countries which are just families and shit that are lazy as fuck what's good but basically what i want to what i want to uh get down to is 
once you figure out that cloning is not just somebody walking around, they look like you and all that shit, you can literally see that cloning is nothing but a constriction and replication of human action. Your personality is the way that you act and the way that you respond to certain things in certain environments. To infinite possibilities, how, how would you re respond to that? If I could literally collect the information from you, and what is information? Information is reaction. It's, it's, it's an exchange of energy. Okay? In order for them to get something from you, they give you something. What do they give you? What do they call it? Technology or... Uh, Intelligence, knowledge. These are all foreign before you know them. You feel me? And you don't really have an overall picture of knowledge, technology, or intelligence before you get it. But once you have it, it is brought to you. And what, like they say, the first encounter means everything. Okay? So if the first time you were brought introduced to a research engine is they made it fun, interesting, you need this, it helps you with so many things and uh blah blah blah. Technology. This is what if you if you use this in your life, you won't have to do that, this and that and this, like washing like let's use for example the washing machine. Back in the day people used to wash clothes all the time, but with the washing machine now you can just throw the clothes in the fucking shit and then you don't have to worry about it. The key is this right here. You were washing shit before the washing machine. Now the same way before uh, the phone was introduced, we had a huge problem with government and spirituality and all that shit. A lot of ill practices going on in our environment basically. That we weren't agreeing with at all. We still don't agree with to this day. <sighs> they knew of this and you knew of this. And you still need to make change. We're still looking for change in our world. Better change to make us better. The same way that they gave you this phone and they introduced it to you in a way that will make you make that seem like it's better and easier for you. To where you can connect to the whole world and um, reach out to everyone around you at one time. This is a whole nother dimension right here. What they call a dimension. Where it's a whole nother stage of life, basically. For it, This is a stage of life where you don't have bugs. Bugs can't get on the internet. Most animals don't get on the internet. Most animals are intelligent enough to get on the internet. This is a mostly human stage of life. Where the internet, that's what the internet is. It is like a literal like dimension of reality where it's like heaven. Now, you have to realize that when you get online to this, you are powering it up, but you are also in a stage giving yourself to it. What yourself is, is the literal information that you are. But no one ever questioned <laughs> where this shit came from. <clears throat> Why do we need it? I can tell you three reasons why somebody would create a hyper reality called the internet or something close to it. And now they have different, so many different portals for it, like Google Chrome and Safari and all these other Microsoft, all this, all other shit. That is literally nothing but 
a group of intelligent people. <clears throat> if you watch these movies, I know it sounds crazy, but you can figure this shit out. If you just look around and you watch some fucking movies, then you study and shit and you read books. And you listen to other people and their opinions. If you just put the facts together, you see that all these internet things, all the internet simulations and shit, they are just intelligent rich people trying to build their own nations and have their own new form of slavery. Simple. A lot of people go to work just to pay their cell phone bill and buy they pay their uh, car note and to pay their rent and all this shit. And you have to realize that you are paying this to the most intelligent person in that field at all times. That's what capitalism is about. It's about competition and the best of the best supplying everybody. Okay, so you are dealing with some intelligent motherfuckers when you're dealing with that sewer shit. The people who are behind the scenes, though, who are funding all this shit, they are the most intelligent people. So what I'm trying to get you to see is that the people who control the Internet are the most intelligent people when it comes to the subject. And they are so intelligent to the fact to where they can already know that the reality that we live in is based on what we put our attention into. Focus. Okay, it's not it's not based on what you believe in. What you believe in is what you focus on and what you pay attention to. But once you focus on the internet, the TV all the time, you focus on your car, all these things that you're spending your lifetime doing, basically, putting action into, in return for that, the more that you can happily make somebody spend their time doing something or get somebody to engage in being happy, enjoying themselves. The more that you can engage that is the more money or the more income and the more attention that you will bring to yourself. And the more attention you bring to yourself is the more power you have. Because at that point in time, you a lot of people are relying on you, basically. They are relying on you. If you don't, if these mother, like for example, if the government and all these places just stop working and all your lights cut off eventually and all the water stop working and everybody just, all this shit just shut down. Then a lot of shit would change. Automatically. But if you have technology to make people's lives easy and change can be what they think is optional in their opinion, which is what the happiness comes from. If you can supply people what they want, basically, whoever can supply people what they want the most will be had the most power. So that's just what that's what technology is all about nowadays in the capitalist system. So with this internet, they knew that all internet is is memory. Memory. So if you can remember what people want the most, whoever whoever they can okay, the internet is basically a catalog of information. You sell this information off bit by bit to different people and they each give you money back in return. Okay? 
So that's all you are seeing. When you go to somebody's page, you're seeing information about them. But social media is just like income tax, the income tax of the Internet. Like we're getting information back, of course, but whoever actually is giving the information back, which is Google and all the other places, they have more information than everybody. And with that information, they have more power than everybody. And that is a new secret society right there, because when you have knowledge, a supreme, not a supreme knowledge, when you have an accumulated, uh, an accumulated group of knowledge and one open source to where people can come to and grab it and it's still there somehow. That means you have infinite amount of this shit. You're just copying it, copying it and selling it, copying it and selling it, copying it and selling it. But you never can run out. And that's why, that's basically the technology of money that we use, currency. There's really infinite money. They print that shit all the fucking time. It don't make no sense. Like, literally, niggas out here killing each other for that shit, and a nigga can print that shit somehow. So, that is the same thing with the internet is. But the internet is a form of money that is actually what money is, is it's, it's, it's recording the exchange of energy. But what knowledge is, is actually the control of the energy itself. Because once you have the knowledge of something, it completely destabilizes your ego and your consciousness of yourself and it engages you with that just based on a thought or a memory or the ability to recall on your thoughts. So I'm just trying to tie this back in because once you have a storage base of where somebody, okay, let's say, for example, if somebody knocks on your door, let's say it's Jehovah Witness, and you look at the fucking door, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, who are these people? You never seen them before. You open the door, and they give you the rundown about the Jehovah Witness and shit. You're like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to hear this shit, but you nice, and you just like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just listen to it for a little while, and then let these motherfuckers leave. Next time you see these motherfuckers, you knock on the, when they knock on the door, you gonna, you're not going to answer the door, nigga. You feel me? You're going to be like, fuck that shit. I'm going to act like I'm not home, okay? So with that being said, that's the same thing. If I know that knowledge, what the Jehovah Witness is going to start doing is not coming to my door no more. But let's say what you're using instead of that is a drug called social media. And with social media, you literally catalog everybody's reaction to each other. And with that technology, you can sell it to different people who actually have money so that you can gain power yourself and clone them. Like, literally adjust your whole business thing and focus it on somebody else's ability to replicate somebody else.
not to mention the amount of money that many people are making just off of spam sales that they get from aborted women and they, they sell this back to different people now that's a very twisted way of gaining money because they do it for free most of them and sometimes they even charge these people and with this they flip that shit and they sell it to a motherfucker who got a disease who's been living unhealthy obviously they don't I'm not saying they don't deserve to be human I'm not saying shit I know shit happens but most of the time people poor people can't even afford these surgeries and shit for stem cells and shit so people who are doing this shit optionally just to have babies and do all this other shit. Males starting to use stem cells to be able to produce babies. This is another form of cloning. This is the technique you use in order to clone. You just have to make the being focus. And put his attention into something that is completely opposite of his nature. 